This next question is a rational expressions question. It says Tina is in a business selling souvenir pens. She purchased a box of pens for $80. She kept five for herself and sold the remainder of the pens for a total of $105, thereby, thereby making a profit of $1 on every pen sold. We want to know how many pens were originally in the case. Well, first thing we do is try to figure out what this question is asking us about. We see that we are talking about $80 for a box of pens, so one of our variables will be total price. Uh, we also see that we're talking about her keeping five pens for herself and selling the remainder of the pens. That tells me that one of the other variables is going to be the number of pens. And finally, we get down a little bit lower, it talks about making a profit of $1 on every pen sold, in other words, $1 per pen. So one of the other variables will be measured in terms of dollars per pen, or price per pen. So we uh, can then move to the next page where we set up this triangle. I find this triangle to be a good visual. It helps me picture the uh, problem. I know that sometimes people don't like to see this, and I understand where they're coming from. Um, if we know that price per pen is equal to the total price over the number of pens, then we should be able to use uh, simple algebra in order to rearrange that equation to say that the number of pens is equal to the total price over the price per pen and similarly we should use be able to use simple algebra to say that the total price is equal to the price per pen times the number of pens. Having said that and acknowledging where uh, some people come from not liking this uh, visual I actually do like the visual I think it helps me to visualize what I need to do in the question. Another thing we need to do here is to determine what our two scenarios are. And one of our scenarios is when Tina purchases the pens. One of our scenarios is when Tina sells the pens. So um, we go back to the question and we ask ourselves ultimately what is this asking us about? Ultimately it's asking how many pens were originally in the case. So um, we're going to let X be the number of pens that were originally in the case. And then we can set up a uh, chart involving our three variables and our two scenarios. Our three variables are total price measured in dollars, the price per pen measured in dollars per pen, that's hard to read but it says dollars per pen, and finally the number of pens measured in, of course, pens. In the scenario where um, Tina is purchasing the pens, we see that she purchased them for a total of $80. So that means in the purchase scenario, the total price is 80. Now we don't know what price she spent per pen, and we don't know how many pens were in the box, but we do know that we set that value equal to x at the beginning. Let x be the number of pens originally in the case. Now, with respect to her selling the pens, we know that she sold them for a total of $105. She sold the remainder of the pens for 105. So the total in the selling scenario is 105, the price per pen is unknown, but the number of pens is now x minus 5. There were x in the um, case originally. She kept 5 of them, so she only sold x minus 5. Now, we don't know what the price per pen was with the purchasing or the selling, but we are going to have to come up with, a, with an equation uh, involving these two variables. And since it tells us that she made a profit of $1 on every pen sold, that tells us that the price she sold the pens for is greater by 1 than the price she paid for the pens. That's why people go into business. In other words, if you took the price that she bought the pens for and added 1, you would get the price that she sold the pens for. Purchase price per pen plus 1 equals selling price per pen. Again, that's why people go into business. Well, going back to our table, we can say that the purchase price per pen, and going back also to our um, pyramid, we can say that the purchase price per pen is equal to the total price over the number of pens. So the purchase price per pen is equal to the total price over the number of pens, 80 over x, plus 1, equals the selling price per pen. Again, going back to our pyramid, the selling price per pen will be the total price with respect to selling over the number of pens she sold. That's 105 over x minus 5. Okay.
So now um, we have to determine our lowest common denominator. Our lowest common denominator in this case is x times x minus 5. Once we have that set, we have to determine also our uh, restrictions. Since our lowest common denominator is x times x minus 5, our restrictions are that x cannot be 0 and x cannot be 5. If our final solution is either x equals 0 or x equals 5, then it's not a solution at all. Fortunately, in this case, our final solution does not conflict with one of these restrictions. So turning the page, we're now going to uh, do some fundamental algebra on each of these um, uh, rational expressions in order to get each of them over, a, over the common denominator. So 80 over x, after multiplying numerator and denominator each by x minus 5, becomes 80 times x minus 5 over x times x minus 5. 1 becomes x times x minus 5 over x times x minus 5. And 105 over x minus 5 becomes 105x over x times x minus 5. We can then multiply every one of these rational expressions by its denominator. This has the effect of clearing out the denominators, so long as x doesn't equal one of the restrictions. This has the effect of clearing out the denominators, allowing us, in a sense, to simply focus on the numerator. So, in a sense, what we just did there is we got all the denominators to be the same so that we could get rid of them. We now have a quadratic. So we expand, and then we know that if we want to be a quadratic hero, we have to set one side to zero. We factor that, and we get x minus 40 times x plus 10 equals zero. We solve this quadratic, and we get two solutions. x is going to equal 40, or x is going to equal negative 10. But the solution of x equaling negative 10 is extraneous. There can't be negative 10 pens in a box. So, we have x equals 40, and we can say with certainty that there are 40 pens in the box initially. Going back to our uh, scenario then, we ask ourselves if this makes sense. She purchased the pens for $80, there were 40 in the box, so she purchased them at $2 per pen. She then kept 5 for herself and sold 35 pens at $105, so that's $3 per pen, so she profited a dollar on every pen she sold. So checking our answer lets us know that we got the correct answer to this problem.